2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Yahweh Shah Masiach. No man that warring entangling himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier. So we've been chosen to be soldiers. A soldier might be in the trenches for weeks, man. One spot. Doing the same thing, man. Watching. Looking. Ready for the ambulance. The soldiers, Marines, I said, you know, I, well, I just put it, I just put it as soldiers. They gave their testimony in Vietnam, and they had to be in the swamp, man. They had to be submerged in the nasty swamp waters, being attacked by mosquitoes the size of walls, and they, they had to take it. They just had to take it. You couldn't spot at mosquitoes, man. You give your position up and get your head blown up. So they had to sit there and let the mosquitoes, you know, attack them as to not give up their position so that they could carry out their mission and fulfill their mission. So right now we have a mission. We can't, we can't give up our position if we wish to carry out and fulfill our mission in this troop. position is to endure to the end. You know? A lot of, a lot of men said, fuck it. Can't stay in this foxhole no more, man. Fuck it. I'm out. Well, they think they still in the truth, and they, they seek a, a easier, kinder, gentler path. While well, they still calling on the name, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, but they're going in a way that's more teacher-friendly to them. That's more profit-friendly to them. Oh, well, you gave up your position. You didn't hold your position. The position you were brought in into, that's the position you got to hold. Doctor, you good, bro? The position you came in under, doctrine that you came in under, the same doctrine that you got to hold. Hold fast that which you have received. It's about being a soldier. So it says, verse 4, no man that warred entangled himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier. That's one thing I had to rebuke myself on because I was getting a little bit too caught up in the affairs of this life. You know, still doing the work, still coming out proclaiming the name, pushing the gospel. But yeah, just a little bit too caught up in the daily affairs of life. And I said, you know what, man, I'm tripping. I'm tripping with this bullshit, man. I got to get focused 100% on my task. You know, I got to come into this truth fully. And the thing about, you know, being by yourself helped me to realize and to see just exactly where I am and what I'm doing and what it is I should be doing and need to do to be delivered. If that made sense, if you brothers can understand, man, being on your own give you a chance to reflect and think and ponder about things. And you see, man, you know, I need to be doing this better. You know, just examining yourself. I, I should have did that better. I'm gonna start doing this better. You know, and, and uh, you know, just refining your walk in this truth. But that's where we at. Time is examining ourselves. Judgment is important. We must refine our walk in this truth. At any point you think, at any point in your walk in this truth, you think you're good, 
then that's good. Then re-examine yourself and do better. There's always room for better. There's always room for, for improvement. this so-called white man down and his king without lifting one sword, gun, knife, what nothing. Just by lifting up Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh shot. And this man is going down. His kingdom is fallen. This is poetic justice in motion. That's poetic justice in motion. See this devil go down. See this so-called white man go down, we have to do one finger against him, but uh, you know, don't get it twisted. The Lord is coming back with vengeance. And he's not gonna meet you people as a man. And he's coming back for judgment. And that's why he told us to wait on him. But right now we're in the beginning of his kingdom going down. Ka halal Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah. This man's kingdom is done, it's toast. It's, it's, stick a fork in it, it's done. All praises, honor, and glory to you, Yahweh, the Heavenly Father, and Yahweh Shai, His only begotten Son. Now it's time to make a stand for the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. Where you at, man? Where you at? No riding the fence. Ain't no in between. Where are you at? You hot or you cold for this? Are you hot or you cold for this? Corinthians chapter 10, <clears throat> verse 4. For the weapons of all warfare are not carnal, <clears throat> but mighty through the Most High to the pulling down of strongholds. Now the strongholds, those, those different, different wrong ideologies, doctrines, you know, uh, philosophies that you got, embedded into your head, those are strongholds. <clears throat> Somebody come up saying that the Lord died for everybody, see that's a stronghold. We spoke going to the scriptures, being instant in season, not season, and tear that down. Tear that madness down. Somebody say that, uh, you know, uh, Lord loves everybody. That's a stronghold. We got to be able to go into the scriptures and tear that down. <clears throat> and only for the elect, the, the heathen and the two-thirds of you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans can believe whatever you want to believe. Because it's not for you to receive this truth. It's all according to the election of grace. So, again, for the weapons of our warfare are not corner, but mighty through the most high to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations. And the root word to imagination is image. So you gotta cast down those image of the Lord being a so-called white man. Scripture stay plain that he's a, uh, brown-skinned man, plainly. 
So it's easy to go into the scriptures and destroy that, but a two-third won't receive it. An Edomite damn sure won't be, be, receive it. Ham, Elam, you got a handful of these other nations, they'll tell you, I know the Lord is a black man or, or a brown, brown skinned man. Especially coming from the east. You know, they'll tell you, yeah, we know the Israelites are black and the Lord's a black man. They'll tell you that. In America, they don't have the slightest idea because of that image, which created an imagination in their head. That's why we, you know, people pray to the Lord, that imagination pops up. White, blue-eyed Jesus pops up in their head when they go down and say, say their Lord's prayer, or whatever prayer they praying, in English, for this clown who say we don't speak the Hebrew. I pray in I pray in the Hebrew. And I know some Hebrew, but not enough to speak it fluent. But I know some Hebrew. And I can carry out the Sabbath service for the most part in Hebrew. At least 75% in the Hebrew. Clown, man, there's too many clowns out there. And uh, well, I mean, that, that's pretty much it. But, but when, when, when all people pray, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, you have that image of the white man in your head. And you pray into the white man, the so-called white man. So, yeah, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of the Heavenly Father and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of my Siak. So, bringing into captivity every thought into the, you know, into the obedience of this word of Yahweh Shai coming to volume of this book. So in other words, if you come up speaking some madness against this book, it's our duty to cut you. It's our D-U-T-Y to C-U-T-U. Whoever's speaking against this word, it's our duty to cut you. So again, let me read that again. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of the Most High and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Masiach. So you got to bring it into captivity. And that's with you, with anybody else come up speaking that mad. If some madness pop up in your head, you got to rebuke that immediately and say, no, I rebuke that. This is what the scriptures say. Like I say somebody come up to you, Cornelius, or that, that uh, the heathens, or uh, that, uh, the Gentiles, the heathens, the other nations can be brought into the fold. No, you got to cut that. That's not what the scripture said. You have to bring that into the obedience of Masiah. So all that has to be brought into the obedience. Saying Cornelius is a so-called white man, or an Edomite, I put it like that. Cornelius was not an Edomite. Cornelius was an Israelite. And that's what we are set for the defense of the gospel. <clears throat> but the scripture does say that the wicked be wicked still, Know, let the righteous be righteous still. So we only we only out here for the elect, in other words. So let me go back to Isaiah chapter 19, verse 3. And the spirit of Egypt shall fail in the midst thereof. And I will destroy the counsel thereof 
and they shall seek to the idols and to the charmers and to them that have familiar spirits and to the wizards <clears throat> and the Egyptians will I give over into the hand of a fool lord and a fierce king shall rule over them said the Most High, the Lord of hosts. So, right, they're going to seek to their idols, they're going to turn to their soothsayers, those who have familiar spirits. All these, you know, the charmers, yeah, that's it, the wizards, to try to obtain power. They're taking counsel. Their counsels are failing. You know? Hillary, again, Hillary Clinton was supposed to be a shoe-in for president of the United States. That council failed. You know, for sure, man, when they brought out about Trump saying grab him in the pussy or grab him by the pussy, that was going to be the end of it. But then guess what? Even more and greater wickedness came out against Hillary Clinton. You may have a thing coming out against her because are you gonna go on? Thank you. Yeah. Uh you may have a thing has come out against Hillary Clinton because now they got her between a rock and a hard place. So now she had no choice but to turn state ev uh, to turn evidence against Hillary. Because of what they supposedly found on Anthony Weiner's uh one of his devices. All this is coming up, man, and their councils are failed. They're in a think tank. I guarantee you they're having a council somewhere right now trying to figure out what they're going to do. The Patriots are gaining ground. I say this, man, the Fed's been, they've been getting busy lately, man. The Fed's been getting busy. They done uh, raided Comfy Spot. The old One West was raided by the FBI. You know, the Fed's been, they've been on the grind lately. So I don't know what all, you know, is going to come, what's going to develop with that. But they show you, man, how is the Garson Comforter going to be raided by the FBI? Why the Holy Spirit going to be raided by the FBI? So all things are being revealed, man. So now, Humphrey got to get him a lawyer and have counsel. That shit is failing because he trusted in Egypt. You know, we're dealing with Egypt. America's going to be destroyed. Comfy trusted in Egypt, and now look what he got. So, now he's, his counselor has failed, or his, his spirit has failed for trusting in Egypt. And then you heard, you heard on the video side that put up, you know, one of the first videos that went up, the guy said, they supposedly lost their tax exempt status. So, you know, that's what happened when you turn your back on your Howard Bosch and your shot. It's good for us, it's all good. What they say, it was all good just a year ago, but now look at you now. So like I say, man, you know, I'm watching to see what develops with that. I don't know all the ins and outs of that. All I do know is that the old one West was raided by FBI. Dogs and everything, all up in the building. Yeah, I remember they t told us because me and the, the head brothers up in uh, Dallas, we cut our teeth dealing with the old comfy crew. They told us that we was gonna go down and they was gonna blow up. They was gonna take over this thing. Now they, 
went from that to being raided by the FBI. Knowing where 